Today I thought it would be kind of fun to play around instead of uh, show something. Uh, so maybe we can learn a little bit about the oscilloscope and the function generator. So what I've done is I've plugged in this function generator, which uh, is an FG-100 DDS function generator. It's an eBay find. And this is the oscilloscope I have, and this is a liter 1020. She's good. She's big. She's analog. It's, you can see it takes up quite a bit of uh, bench space, but okay, she'll do the job. Maybe I'll get a nicer one one day, maybe if these videos uh, ever make any money, but whatever, who cares. Let's talk about this. So what I've done is, on the function generator here, you can see that I've set up a sine wave at 100 hertz, or 1 kilohertz. And there it is up on the screen, nice and pretty. So, that's actually set to 2 volts by division. We have a division going up, a division going down. So we have 2 times 2 volts, so we have a 4 volt peak to peak signal. That's all good. So what I wanted to play around with a bit today was offsets and couplings. So what I'm going to do for fun is you can see on here there's a button that says DC offset off on. Let's turn it on. Oh! Something jumped. Okay. Sorry. There's my trigger. So I just adjusted the trigger there to make sure I was in the right spot. So something happened here. It jumped up. When we started the video it was sitting there in the middle when I hit the DC offset button on here, it jumped up. It actually jumped up by about uh, 2 volts. So what happened there? Well, that was the DC offset. We are adding a DC voltage to the signal. Well, that's kind of silly, but that could be important too. So, let's say we had a signal that already had an offset, and it wasn't controlled by a button that just turned it off and on. Let's say we want to bring that back down, but we know that this signal is a, has an origin of, uh, well, this signal here, the center of it's at 2 volts. So let's say we want to bring it back down to center. If you look over here, this is your coupling here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it to AC. I have to adjust my trigger again here. So there we go. Now I've brought it back down, but the signal on the function generator actually still has two volts added to it so it's bringing it up so by playing with the coupling you can see that I'm moving it up I'm adjusting my trigger up there we go and then I can bring it back down again I've got to move my trigger back down so that's kinda of neat so now even though this signal has a uh, DC offset attached to it, I can remove it down here, or I can view it with it. So, maybe what we'd always be better to do, maybe, is leave our coupling set to DC, because you may not notice otherwise that there is an offset on there. So, something else that we could do, though, is uh, let's do a little experiment here. So here's the probe that I use that I have connected to the function generator here, so that's just loop through, nothing too exciting there. So let's go and take this little capacitor here. So now what we've done is nothing too exciting yet, so you can see that the function generator and the probe are on one leg of the capacitor. Now on channel 2 I have another probe set up here. So now I have it set up so that I have one probe and the function generator on one leg, and I've attached the second probe to the other leg. So let's go over here and flip this one onto DC. So both these couplings are set to DC. And let's alternate. Oh, so we discovered that if you put the coupling on AC, it will remove the DC component of the signal on the screen. But I do still have that 2 volt offset on there, but these are both coupled. At, uh, on the DC, so they're showing the offset. So what happened here? Well, this capacitor, so this is a 103, which makes it a 10 uh, nanofarad capacitor. And what it is doing is it is actually blocking the DC and passing the AC. So even though this signal that we're sending in is actually completely existing on the positive side, 
we've actually been able to remove that DC component and we actually have a signal that's alternating between plus 2 volts and negative 2 volts. So we were actually able to uh, create a pretty neat signal using stuff that was all uh, sitting in the positive area. So that's kind of a look at how these couplings work and just for fun too we can knock these both off and put them into AC, adjust my trigger, and there we go. You can actually see that with the AC coupling on, it is uh, removing the DC component for us on the screen here, and you can see that they're overlapping. You will notice they're not perfect, but that's actually because of these probes not being uh, perfectly matched. Uh, so ignore that. They should be completely on top of each other for, uh, for this uh, demonstration anyway. So, you might also be thinking, well, I don't really know what all this means. Does it apply to anything? And I actually have an example on my workbench here where I've built, I've been working on this little radio project, and what I will do now is I will go to channel 1. Let us remove some of this stuff here. So, I have removed probe 1. Now, this oh, this over here is a radio project I'm working on, and what I've done is that's a TEA five seven six seven module. You can uh, see more about it if uh, you look at my other blogs. So I've been working on this radio, and this little jumper wire here is connected to the audio out pin. So let's take a look at it and uh, see what what comes out of this thing. So. This chip is powered by 5 volts right now, and uh, let's give it a ground. So I've connected the probe to the audio output from the TEA5767 module, and I've connected the output from there right up to the scope. And you can see here that with the coupling set to DC, it is not sitting in the center here like it should be. We want it there, but it's up here. So, you can see that we're sitting one, two, three. It looks like most of the signal is actually above three volts on there. So what we would do is if we have a capacitor on there, which we do, uh, we can bring it all back down to here, where we want it. So that's what's happened here, is the signal will go through this potentiometer to let us adjust the amplitude of it and we're going to send it into this chip. In front of the chip there you can see a little ceramic capacitor and that capacitor there is a 103 which is removing the DC component of the signal for the amplifier. So that's pretty much uh, all there is to talk about about that for today. So we learned a little bit about uh, capacitors, we learned a little bit about offsets, we learned a little bit about coupling. So hopefully you learned a little bit about scopes and other stuff. Anyway, have a good night.